This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, a subscription streaming service that offers over 2,000 documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. Get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month, and for our audience, the first 30 days are completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com forward slash brainfood and use the code brainfood, all one word, lowercase, no quotes, during the sign-up process. Now, if you're looking for a specific recommendation on that platform, then why not check out something I recently watched called Pluto Beyond the Flyby. This looks at all we've learned about the planet since the flyby of the New Horizons craft. It's a great watch, and you can do that in your free trial period, but there's also loads of other stuff to watch as well. It's available on loads of platforms as a web app, Roku, Android, Xbox One, Smart TVs, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Amazon Kindle, Apple TV, and it's all available worldwide. Again, go to curiositystream.com forward slash brainfood for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for our viewers, enter the promo code BRAINFOOD when prompted during the sign-up process, and your membership is completely free for 30 days. So in the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Jessica Kay asks us, has anyone ever inherited millions of dollars from a long-lost relative that they've never heard of, like what happens in the movies? Alright, so if you're like, well, pretty much everyone, at some point you've received an email claiming that you've inherited a large sum of money from some person that you've never heard of. All you have to do is provide various bits of personal data to verify that you are who they think you are, and then of course your bank account information as well, so that the deceased's crack legal team can deposit all of that money. But, well, has anyone ever actually received such a missive noting that they've inherited a large sum from someone they don't even know, and it's not been a scam? Well, it turns out that the answer is yes, absolutely. In fact, while it's certainly uncommon in some sense, it doesn't take much digging at all to find a variety of known cases of this happening, and presumably there are many, many more instances that have never made the newsreels. To start with, we have the case of a man listed in the newspaper clipping describing the event called only Dr. Meseros. The good doctor willed around $50,000 in 1930, which is about $770,000 today, to an actress by the name of Corinne Ward. This came as a rather large shock to the young Miss Ward, who Meseros had never bothered to even introduce himself to. Before receiving the windfall, she hadn't even known he existed. It was presumed in the news report that Meseros must have been in love with this beautiful actress. Apparently, a good year for actresses, or at least in this case, a former actress. Also in 1930, we have the case of Lillian Malrup. Five years previous, Malrup inherited $60,000, which is approximately $870,000 today, from her uncle George Lemondier. Five years later, Malrup would receive an even greater windfall from her uncle's former business partner, who she'd never met and only knew of at all from a couple of passing references that her uncle had made in letters to her from years before. So, how much did this mysterious business partner leave the young woman that he'd ever met? Well, that would be a whopping $700,000, which is about $10.7 million today. This was no doubt a welcome thing to deposit into her account, coming on the heels of the 1929 stock market crash. He left her only one stipulation to getting the money. That she had to set aside $100,000, which is about $1.5 million today in a trust, and use the interest from that to fund scholarships for college students. In yet another case from the early 20th century, we have the rather odd story of Archibald MacArthur, a man who deserves a video of his own, actually. But to sum up his life story for now, as a young man, he moved to Dodgeville, Wisconsin. He arrived with almost literally nothing but the clothes on his back and a degree from Lawrence College. On his first day in town, he worked soaring logs in exchange for a bed to sleep in that night, as well as a hot meal. He subsequently spent the next couple of decades making a fortune, living lavishly and then for reasons known only to him, very suddenly liquidating all of his assets, becoming a vegetarian, and growing a rather Dumbledore-esque beard. Importantly, in addition to all of this, he also took a vow of poverty. He lived in a shack from then on and mostly just hung out in a nearby cemetery reading philosophy books and poetry. According to a January 31, 1926 article from the Milwaukee Journal, he told people who asked him that he preferred hanging out with the dead more than the living. After a few decades living like this, at the age of 78, he seems to have felt the call all elderly people feel at some point, and he decided to move to Florida. He thus bought a car, drove to Florida, sold the car, and he died a few years later. Beyond a few other bequests, including randomly leaving $15,000, about $216,000 today, to the son of a woman, Mrs. Jane Joyce, whose family Family he had been friends with when he was young, he left the bulk of his estate, $300,000, about $4 million today, to a young clerk by the name of George Rafferty he met once on a park bench in Jacksonville, Florida. 
Moving on, we have the case of Wellington Burt, who decided not to leave the majority of his reasonably respectable fortune to his living family members, but rather to his future family. He stipulated in his will that the majority of his estate was not to be divided until 21 years after his last grandchild had died. Burt died all the way back in 1919, with his last remaining grandchild dying in 1989. When the trust cashed out in 2010, it had grown to a whopping $110 million, which was divided between 12 of his descendants. In perhaps the largest sum ever inherited by someone who did not know the person who bequeathed it to them, we have the case of Zasalt and Gerza Pallardi. They were literally living in a cave near Budapest when they were painstakingly tracked down and then, once found, were informed that they had inherited over six billion dollars. Yes, billion with a B there. They inherited it from a grandmother that they'd never met. We knew our mother came from a wealthy family, but she was a difficult person and severed ties with them and then later abandoned us and we lost touch with her and our father until she eventually died. In fact, according to Gaze, the grandmother had not even known that the pair existed. It was her lawyers that learned of their births about four decades previous and hired someone to track them down. Okay, so those are the exceptional cases. But what about for everyday Joe Schmoes like you and me? Well, it turns out instances of unclaimed estates of people who died without a will or an immediate heir aren't that uncommon. This is noted to be in part because people are horrible at getting around to making wills. For example, in the UK, only about half of the adults in the country have bothered to do this. So how do you find out if you're one of those lucky individuals who's due to get an inheritance that you don't know about? When a person dies, either without a will or with a will that isn't valid or applicable for whatever reason, they're classified as dying intestate. In the UK, for example, this results in their estate passing on to the government legal department, specifically to a department called Bona Vacantia, which literally translates to vacant goods. Bona Vacantia, who acts on behalf of the Crown, will then make its best effort to track down the closest living kin of the deceased. If Bona Vacantia cannot find an entitled blood relative, the onus then falls on the potential heir of the deceased to make a claim. To assist this, Bona Vacantia maintains a frequently updated, easily searchable list of every unclaimed estate in the country. If a match is found, one of the first things a potential claimant has to do is figure out where they fall in the so-called order of priority. This is essentially a list detailing who, in the eyes of the Crown, is entitled to an unclaimed estate, starting from husbands and wives on down to half-aunts and uncles and their children. In essence, anyone who falls into one of these categories can theoretically make a claim on an unclaimed estate, though their claim could be suspended by a counterclaim from someone higher up on the list. As for those who simply don't know to check if they're owed some inheritance, there are so-called heir hunters who make their living tracking down the distant relatives of people whose estates lie unclaimed and charging a premium for bringing this knowledge to a person's attention. In the UK, it's usually a small percentage of the total estate's value. In any event, once a claim has been made and Bona Vacantia is happy that a person's status as a legitimate heir is established through genealogy records, the amount of the estate that they're entitled to will be paid out. If after 30 years the estate remains unclaimed, it will be dissolved and added to the treasury. Exactly how much money this amounts to in any given year is unclear, but it's known that in between 2013 and 2014, a cool £14 million in unclaimed money went to the Crown. As for making a claim like this in the United States, and really in many nations, similar to the UK, individual states maintain lists of unclaimed property and estates that can be accessed and searched by the public. The scope and accuracy of this will vary on a state-by-state -state basis. Again, as with the UK, if a person in the US dies without a will or a will that isn't considered valid, the government will take control of their estate. However, there are some notable differences. For a start, while the Crown has a blanket policy of holding estates for 30 years before it goes to the Crown, some states, such as Texas, will do the same after just four years. Again, the statute of limitations when it comes to making a claim on the estate does vary depending on where you live. As for what happens to the the unclaimed money when it is handed over to the state, that also depends on individual states as they're largely free to choose what they want to do with the money. For example, Maryland gives the money from unclaimed estates directly to the Board of Education unless the deceased died in the care of the Maryland Medical Assistance Program, in which case the estate will go to the Maryland Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Like in the UK, so-called air hunters may also track down distant relatives who have a potential claim to an unclaimed estate. However, unlike in the UK, companies offering such a service are usually, though not always, 
always acting on behalf of the government. As the Air Hunters Association notes, most state organizations make every effort to trace beneficiaries using probate researchers, who may also be called probate detectives or air hunters. Usually, specialist firms are appointed on a regular basis and may work on a fee basis paid from the entire estate or contingency where tracing fees are deductible from a beneficiary's share. Finally, while there are some cases of a Brewster's Millions type scenario involving someone inheriting massive sums from an eccentric, long lost uncle that they didn't know about, most cases we researched concerned far more modest estates, more in the thousands of dollars range instead of the millions or billions. This kind of makes sense if you think about it. Because really, when an obscenely rich person dies, there are always people lying around who will be quick to try and claim a piece of the pie, whether there is a will present or not. For the most famous case of this happening, do check out our video on what happened to Howard Hughes's fortune after he died. And now for some bonus facts. In perhaps one of the most touching cases of someone being bequeathed something they didn't know about upon the death of another, we have the case of the famed comedian Jack Benny. Not long after he died, his wife of 47 years, Mary Livingston, received a knock on the door. When she answered it, she was given a single red rose from the local florist. The next day, she received another. The next day, another, and this went on again and again. It turns out that Benny had stipulated in his will that funds were to be set aside for a florist to deliver a rose to his beloved wife every single day for the rest of her life. All total, more than 3,000 roses were delivered over the course of the remaining nine years of her life. Going the other way on the love meter, famed poet Heinrich Heine decided to leave his entire estate to his wife when he died in 1856. While you might think that this is a natural and loving thing to do, it came with one condition. She would not receive it until she remarried. As for his reason, to quote his will, so that there will be at least one man to regret my death. And now for another bonus fact. Speaking of hundreds of millions of pounds worth of unclaimed estates sitting around doing nothing, it turns out the UK government itself is currently slated to inherit nearly 400 million pounds from an unknown donor who left approximately 500,000 pounds in a trust to the government in 1928. So, well, why hasn't this been given to the government yet? Well, the donor included a stipulation that the fund was not to be bequeathed until such a time as it is sufficient to pay off the country's national debt, which is currently just shy of two trillion pounds or about six thousand times the current sum held in the trust. In the meantime, it's something of a cash cow for the Baring Brothers Law Firm and Barclays Investment Bank. These days, they earn a cool million or so pounds per year for their services in managing the trust. So, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, thanks to CuriosityStream for sponsoring it. Go to curiositystream.com forward slash brain food for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non fiction series. And for our listeners, just enter the promo code BRAINFOOD when prompted during the sign up process. And your membership is completely free for the first 30 days. As always, please do hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.